Welcome back, everybody. This is Minister J. Renee with Real Talk. And I told you I am so excited for today's show because I have a wonderful guest. And I love these moments. You are going to enjoy this episode. I promise you are. So let me tell you, I have the vivacious vibe, vivacious vibe guide. Oh, my goodness. See how exciting that is? That is exciting. You got to get it all in there in studio with me. And let me please introduce you to the wonderful Coach Kayla Vivian. Hi, Coach. <laughs> Did you like that? I love Did the you intro. Like, Thank you know you what? So it's it's got to be as, <laughs> as, as magnificent as you are. I'm going to tell you, you, you bring in just your title. You bring oh, that man. in. So I am loving this. Um, you know what I just want to say? Because you know what, everybody? Can I tell y'all something? I want her to do most of the talking because I know that you are curious about vivacious vibe guy. But you know what? Before we get there, are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> I want you. So I love to hear about the beginning and how things get started and where the birth from because that is so important to know like the root of something because people can read a title and be like, oh, whatever. But when they know where it comes from, it puts another power and um, another emphasis, a bump to it, if you will, that says, yes, I got to have that. And listen, listen, <laughs> even I know that we got to have this. So come on, tell us uh, how this got started. Tell us about what Vivacious Vibe Guide is all about. Tell us about that. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for sharing Aww. space with me or inviting me. I feel uh, I feel like family. You are. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's an honor to be here. But um, the vivacious vibe, God, wow. Uh, where do I even start? Um, five years old, okay. Wow. Uh, red stockings, red ribbons in my hair. My mom always had <laughs> some red ribbons in my hair. And um, I had a solo in the Moffitt Family Concert. Um, and so we we're in East Orange, New Jersey, and my mom is a associate pastor of wow. the congregation in East Orange, New Jersey. And we were doing the Moffitt Family Concert. Now I'm the youngest, and um, the next sister up, she's 10 years older than me, and then I have 12, and, and then I have some, um, some I mean, I'm, I'm the youngest, I'm the baby, <laughs> okay? Yes, ma'am. But I remember singing, if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me and I and I'm not a, I'm a dancer now but um I just remember singing that and so my whole life has been the evidence of that really trying to really figure out um how I can just feel more alive and how I can serve so um teaching is my first passion really and um you know 2014 I graduated and I started teaching in the school system okay um well COVID came Okay. My pleasant surprise. I say pleasant only because um, it did bring me to a place where I realized my passion really is to serve in a way that they are confident in their purpose. And I say people because not only children. I was in schools, um, but I just knew that that there is a, there's power in deciding to live your life to the fullest. Yeah, absolutely. And so um, COVID came before that. I also had a, a transformational moment in my life where I was asked to dance at a young man's funeral. Wow. <sighs> Tell us about that experience. Just okay, and, and I didn't really know. I didn't know his name is Jihad Payne, and um, I didn't know Jihad, but I've seen him around, and he had such a vibrant personality. I mean, wow. very, and so um, I don't even know how it got to that moment where you know he passed away. Uh, the church that I, Morristown, I was in Morristown, and so the church that I was in, um, we had a youth summer camp, and I was teaching the fruits of the spirit there, and that's what Jihad usually would teach, and he passed away, so the whole church is mourning, you know, and we, yeah. and it, but during that time, um, his legacy really moved me, 
and um, he had a legacy of creativity. Huh? He actor, he was, you know, poet, uh, dance, doing all these things, and um, it moved me from a time of like really going through depression, in and out, and doing different things um, that really just took some of my energy. Right. <laughs> I was dealing with some energy vampires oh, and focus fillers <laughs> and different things right. of that nature. Right. And after that event, that's when really, that's when things really took off. Where I was like, you know what? I have to use creativity as my superpower. I have to do something where humanity knows that, you know, we are here, we are here with purpose, with purpose. and we need to live life on purpose. I know that was long, but... No! <laughs> uh, you know what? I think that's beautiful, but so, um, and just looking at this, you said uh, vampires, you know, like, you know, stealing your, your essence and the thing that causes you to, to move with creativity, and you took that and said, okay, no, 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 I'm, I'm going to birth out of this. Right. And you didn't let it take you all the way down. And so right now, you mentioned, okay, hey, the pandemic came. And a lot of people, um, uh, even now, where our church is experiencing so many, uh, a high volume of, of funerals, right? Yeah. There's so much being taken, you know, so much being drained from us. This is the season for Vivacious Vibe. And I love... You know, because not only are you in this thing, but you're showing us how you birthed out of it. And you know what? Normally, people say, oh, you're like crabs in a bucket, not you. You say, you know what? I'm the crab and here's the rope and I'm going to pull you out. You know, right. and I love that. And I, I think that is so important. I think that's something that we need to focus in. I think that being in a funeral where everybody is mourning and here you are, you have to bring joy in the middle of mourning. All of that has gifted all over it. It has God sent all over it because there, there is a presence of God in the midst mm -hmm. of the pain. If you can just see a beam, and I think that you are a, a sunbeam, right? And you're saying, I'm here. <laughs> and it might sound like a lot, but I think that is ministry in the making, in and of itself. Absolutely. Come on, tell us some more. Oh, my goodness. Absolutely. I call it creative ministry. Oh, I love it. Come <laughs> on. Okay. And so, I mean, and I'm just, I just, I was getting goosebumps. You just talking about, I mean, honestly, you didn't use um, the words that I'm going to use. Right. But um, there's so much life in grief. And it sounds crazy. It does. But just like Jihad Payne, I mean, I didn't even really know him. I didn't have, now I have a relationship with his mom. And, yeah. But I didn't know him. But just by him passing, he passed that light on to me. And now I gotta, I better go ahead and reach my hand out and get wow. somebody else. I love it. I so love I it. believe that's what ministry is. I believe is I believe it's just applying ease, yeah. right? So I have to apply ease to myself. Yeah. Um, especially, you know, teaching during during COVID. I realized I was like, I do not want to water what I'm teaching down anymore. Wow. I love math. I love reading. Great. But um, even the moms and the dads, we needed some yes. mindfulness. We needed yes. time to really find gratitude and, you know, with, within all the things that were happening. And um, I just feel like this is what the church needs. Yes. Creative ministry where we are sharing wealth because wealth is access. Oh, but we're sharing wealth it. by just sharing our healing journey, our story. Right. right. And so that's why I can say, like, look, you know, I was going through some things, you know, I've been through depression, I've, I've worked with some energy vampires, you know, I, <laughs> like, I can, I, can, I can speak on that. Yeah. I can speak on yes. that. But the most important thing is to really find the light in your moment, really. Right. You, really. You know, oh, let me, I, I can't tell you. <laughs> how you are so going into another episode of mine, but I'm going to try my best not to jump ahead. Oh my goodness. I'm like, ah, so, you know, you listen, y'all already know that I got to bring her back. Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> as long as y'all already knew that we're good, we're good, but we're not going to go there just yet. But oh my goodness. But I, you know what, when I, when you say vivacious vibe, what is it? Uh, that you take this wonderful energy and, you know, t tell us, because um, you said, okay, you said it steals energy, 
And in a pandemic, you're still going with this. How are you going with this in the middle of a pandemic? How are you doing this? Come on, tell me, what are you doing to keep doing this in the middle of a pandemic? I'll tell anybody any day, um, the vivacious vibe, the yes. vibe, the energy, the spirit I'm talking about is Jesus. <laughs> I love the Jesus juice. Okay, I mean, <laughs> I'm dealing with that sauce. I mean, Jesus has too much sauce. Yes. So, I mean, I, I, I really just, I, I really, um, I learned a long time ago, uh, really working with, you know, being able to acknowledge my feelings, being able to apply ease by being compassionate to myself and being Very kind, um, you know, but still having questions like, what is love, you know, Ooh, love and it. where is God? Love it. <laughs> and so okay. what is love? Where is God? And so I knew, I just remember one day I'm like, you know, I knew there's another way to live life. There's another way of being. And I knew it because I grew up in the church. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a, that's a tough, that's a... I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I heard about that. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. But, you know, I'm like, you know, there, it, I knew that there's something else. I knew um, that there is a connection that I had. Yeah that I wasn't really tapping into. So honestly, the secret, which is not a secret, is to really link up, team up with God. Yes. And that's what I do. I think like a lot of my friends, they, um, and this is also why I started life coaching because I realized like, man, this is what I like to talk about. I mean, not everybody likes to talk about God. It's a, it's a, it's a tricky, tricky subject sometimes, just yes. to be honest. Yes. Um, but that, God has definitely been my every source every bit of strength come on and it's me really going past religion which is practice and uh -huh. just and this and yeah. that uh, to having a personal relationship with god yes. Yes. um and it's being like god what's up what's going on like what you want me to wear today yeah. um you know like holy spirit you know i need you to fully show up to, <clears throat> excuse me i need you to fully show up to this moment because yeah. you know i'm a hot mess uh <laughs> but you know i love you and i'm trying to do your <laughs> right and so that that has been the secret. Yeah, every exactly. it works every time. Linking up with God every time. You, you know uh, that's important. That, I mean, I, I wanna, I wanna get right there in it because you know this is my favorite thing to listen. <laughs> Ooh, I can sit and talk about yes. God. And and, uh, and reason is is because and this is so wonderful. You say Holy Spirit, show up in this moment because I'm a hot mess, and people think. You know, when they, they look at us, uh, how we dress, how we smile, how we love, and they think, oh, they got it all together. No, the Holy Spirit is in this moment, believe me, because um, we are, are not called to be perfect, right? right? But when we are in him, where he wants us, then that's when people get to see. So you know what? Oh my goodness, this is so good and I love it. But I have to take a station break just for a moment. We're going to come back and give you a whole lot more. See you right after this. Did you know that the word alma mater comes from the Latin meaning nurturing mother? One of our primary objectives at Simmons College of Kentucky is to nurture late bloomers. So it doesn't matter if you struggle through high school just to graduate or even if you earn your GED. We don't look at a student's past. We look at their potential. Simmons College of Kentucky, creating the next generation of thinkers. Welcome back, everybody. I told you it's just going to be a moment. Hey, listen, this is getting so good to be in Kayla. We just decided we are just going to continue where we are. Um, hey, I know you're enjoying it. So are you ready? Here we go. So, Kayla, you know what you was talking about? Um, what we were talking about, what we were headed to. <laughs> yeah, we were headed to um, this, this uh, about where people are in the pandemic. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I, I just can't. I, I tried my best, but here we go. So what it what it has done, though, I think um, 
it has caused like a trauma. You know, and people don't realize it. Like they don't, they don't, they don't realize that they're hurt. Um, there are things going on in their life, um, whether it's depression, whether their body is starting to change and do different things, and it's all really from the core of the hurt or the trauma from losing someone, from uh, being locked up in, um, you know, in their their home, from just all kinds of things that have happened during the pandemic. Um, even the fear that comes afterwards, like they can't function anymore. Mm-hmm. Come on, tell us some, tell, just talk to us some about that. I mean, I can, I, I can relate to it. <laughs> you can? Well, I know we both can relate. <laughs> but you know, well, I'm, I'm saying this, uh, let me just say it and let me frame it this way. Um, I think that vivacious vibe is in its season to be boom. It, it, the church, so we look, okay, everybody says, you know, God, this, God, that, and they really um, are saying his name with hopes of a way to tap into who he is. Right, right. And we talked about, you, hey, you're, uh, hey, I'm a hot mess, but Holy Spirit, I need you because the Holy Spirit is able to uh, sustain us and, 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 and momentumize us. You know, we, we get in this momentum and we keep going and it looks like, oh my goodness, you should be failing, but really we know um, when you tap in mm-hmm. to the Holy Spirit, there's a, okay, I don't have to be perfect. I just got to keep moving. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we need a little boost to help us to continue to move. I mean, everything, I can't even tell you all the storms I'm in right now, but I'm going to the other side. And absolutely, it, <laughs> absolutely. You, you know, so so sometimes people don't always, you know, I, I've sat in churches and I've heard people say, I, I don't know what to do. And I'm thinking, wow, not, not like, oh my goodness, you should know, mm-hmm. but wow, we are really hurting, mm-hmm. you know, because we walk with God all this time and now we're at a place like, what do I do? And so just your, your expertise and your coaching, because I did say coach, y'all remember I said coach, so, but, and your coaching is what is needed in this time. And tell me some of your passion just about that. Mm-hmm. I, I'm very passionate about really being able to direct your thoughts to gratitude, right? Ooh. And it's interesting because I heard you say, you know, sometimes you'll hear someone say, uh, you know, I just don't know what to do. Yeah, yeah. That is like ding, ding, ding. That is, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that's why it's so important to have some type of Uh, grounding because once you realize that you can make a decision I think things really change like you know and it's one thing because we're human so we we don't know we feel like we don't know right um but we know we I know somebody who does know uh, (laughs) um which is God (laughs) and and not to say that I know it all I don't know it all right right but I think it's when we come to a place where we are experiencing grief, you know, the loss of something, the loss of a, a, That's right. the loss of a relationship, but a, also a loss of who we thought we would be, oh, um, where we thought on. we would be. You know, all those things can be very, very painful. Yeah. Um, but one, just being able to acknowledge the fact that I feel not good right now. I feel terrible. I think that is really important and that's something I do with my clients just to um, acknowledge the fact that first of all you are aware of how you're feeling. Oh my goodness. You're and not only that, you're brave enough to say, listen, I I'm really going through some things right now. Brave enough. Okay. You this is knocking me out of my box. And and let me can I just tell you why? Some because we are Christians. Mm-hmm. I, and listen, I'm saying this because it doesn't matter what everybody else thinks, right? We don't have to continue to play this role like you're never supposed to be upset. You're never supposed to be sad because you're a Christian. Mm-hmm. Listen, we're in a world, even though we're not a part of it, but we are affected by it because we are in it. And being honest and upfront about, you know what, I'm mad, I'm upset. Listen, the laments in the book of Psalm, that's what it's all about. It's about the laments. I, I know God, 
-hmm. But this is what I'm feeling right now. <laughs> right. You know, David, yeah. you know, when King David had to, um, his, his baby died. Remember the baby died? You know, oh, where's the man? He made this thing. He, he finally had to get up and say, you know what? The boy's not coming to me. I will go to him. Let me keep on moving. Let me keep right. on moving. You know, King David, you know, and I, I think he was in himself. He was, he did everything he could. He prayed. He, he, he mourned. He was in sackcloth. He was doing everything he could um, for that baby's life to stay where it's at. But guess what? At the end of the day, he was gone. You know, uh, and, it, and it's not somebody's fault. You know, it's your baby died or your son died or whoever. It's somebody you lost. You're grieving a loss. Not, hey, you can grieve a loss of, of a, a, a body part. You know, you can. Mm -hmm. So, but I'm just saying the, the worst kind of grief that I could think of. And, and here you are. He's a man after God's heart. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. he's, he's got all of this and, and he walked with God. He believed God in his hardest places. And yet we come to this. Did God betray him? No, no. But he was honest about his pain. He was honest about his seeking. And I think that we overlook that, that uh, David still had God's heart. And I, I think that we overlook all of that, uh, the getting up, I, we overlook that. And we say, no, people are gonna look at me crazy because I'm mad, because I'm angry, or because I'm upset, or because I'm grieving, or because I'm mourning. I'm supposed to always be happy, so I can't show anybody this, you know what, man, being brave to say where you really are. You know what, God has, you know, he has tough shoulders, he can take it. <laughs> When you're mad, when you're upset, when you're hurt, he. But you know, I I think that sometimes um, the body has to look at that. That you don't have to hide that. You can be transparent because somebody else is hurting doesn't know how to, you know, shun it away in public, if you will, or you know, not be transparent. They need to see that it's okay for them to grieve, it's okay for them to be mad, but not to stop, mm -hmm. to continue, to keep going. And you bring up, oh my gosh, it is like the common of the century. <laughs> I can I can hurt, but I, I gotta keep going. You know, I gotta keep moving. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I mean, authenticity says, oh, you know, I love it. that I'm even, <laughs> That one is it's just a superpower within itself. Yeah. So to be authentic and say, look, this is this is what it is. But also, and I decide to keep moving. And I decide. Come on. Because once you do that, now you can gain some partnerships. Hey now. Okay, and even for those who because I always think about, well, oh my gosh, like, you know, I'm a Jesus girl, but you know, what if somebody doesn't, I mean, that's not their vibe, that's not what they're really going for, but they want to live life fully. Um, either way, you have to make decisions. You're gonna uh, have to make a decision, right? To move on and then be, being able to say, okay, this is how I feel. Yeah. And I'm deciding I'm gonna continue to move on. I'll continue to live life. I'll try, I'll try, even just a little try, I'll try. Yeah, yeah. And then, <laughs> then you're able to now be be in a place where you can have access to the resources available to you. Wow. Sometimes they're right in our face, but we're too busy, you know, thinking about yesterday and everything that's wrong that we can't even see the light. We can't find the gratitude. We can't, because we didn't make a decision to move on. Wow. Wow. So we can't just stop making decisions when we get in the middle of our mess. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, you got it. Because even faith is a decision. If I go faith-based, that's, that, that's a decision and it's an action. So that's huh. like, that's step one, step two. <laughs> right, right? I love but it. But if you're not, yes. with, if, if you're not yes. there yet, even if you're not there in faith, and that's not your, like I said, some people might not, that might not be your thing, okay? Well, it's still about what, okay, what am I going to do? And as my teacher hat comes on, what, what <laughs> strategies am I going to use? I love it. To do this thing. That was a teacher moment. I yeah, love that. Yeah. Strategy. What <laughs> is the what strategy? strategy? Oh my goodness. It's a way to solve a plan of action. Yeah. What? Yeah. What's your plan of action? 
I see how you, you can move all your gifts in there. I love that. <laughs> God is a waste of moment. My Not goodness. Not a second. But wow. Yeah. Now, okay, man, we are running. You know, it feels like we just started this. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I love running. this. And we're like right at the end. So, you know what? I Because, um, and I just think that I want people to know, like, how to reach you, how to... Uh, get in touch with you because just the powerful things that you said like like I know okay not to stop but I never looked at it like hey you still got to make a decision here are you going to quit or are you going to keep living are you going to what what's your strategy we stop thinking about strategies we're like Ugh. you know in a trauma brain it just everything kind of shuts down and even when you are in the trauma, you, you're seeing it very differently, you know? So, um, and sometimes I don't know if people realize they're in trauma. You know how uh, I, would, I, I would call it shock. Right, right. And when you don't have someone there to coach you, you know, hey, you're not alone, all right? What do you want to do? But listen, whatever it takes, let's just not stop. You know, um, let's just not stop. And I, I love, so I I know it's the title, but I just got to say, I love this vibe. <laughs> ah, it's, this is, you know, I like just being real. This is real talk. And I'm going to tell you what, I, I tell you what, I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> so you got to come back. There, there has just, now I know y'all agree with me. I know. Listen, I can hear you screaming right now <laughs> in the car, in your living room. Like, I yes, it. I got to have some more. I know. I hear you. I got you. I got you. So how about this, Kayla? You want to come back and do a part two? Let's do a part two. Oh, my goodness. Let's so this two. right here is to be continued. Hey, this is Minister J. Renee on Real Talk with the coach, Kayla Vivian. And we'll see you next time. Hey, God bless you all. Uh, yeah, yeah, I said see you next time, right? I'm so excited. See you next time. See you next time. All right. God bless you all. And hey, stay tuned. We're coming back. <laughs>